So I woke up this morning excited to do another vlog, but the thing is, my flat is a real mess. Before I do anything else, I need to clean up. Okay, so today I wanna to talk about lenses and the lenses that I've chosen to get and why. When I got my camera, it came with the 18 to 55 millimeter Canon kit lens, and this is 3.5 to 5.6 aperture, so that's okay. Um, it's super light and super cheap. It didn't really feel like I was buying it, it just came with the camera. It's 58 millimeter around, and it has got image stabilization, which is nice. Um, the thing about it is, for video, the aperture isn't really low enough because the lower the aperture, the more light the lens lets in. 3.5 and you only get that 3.5 when you're at 18 millimeters but it's okay it's okay I've taken some nice pictures with it and it's been good my last vlog I actually shot it with this just because it was an easy quick lens to grab put on the camera if I'm moving around with the camera then it's just so light that it's actually it's all right and I don't really sort of worry about it because it is cheap as soon as I got the camera I realized that a lot of the nice video that I see around is attributed to the lens that people put on their camera. So I decided pretty early on I was probably going to invest in a lens or a couple of lenses and it's taken me a little while to figure out why and what and what lens to get. I'm just going to give you a brief rundown of some of the lenses that I have bought. So yeah, let's get into this. So that's the kit lens. After that, I wanted to do some nice portrait shots and realized that the key to the portrait shots is the nice blurry background, the bokeh. You get that bokeh by reducing the depth of field and shooting wide open, so a wide aperture, low number. So I got this little Canon 50 millimeter, uh, and this is a prime lens, just 50 mil, and this has got an aperture of 1.8, so it lets in a huge amount more light than the kit lens. It's a lovely little dinky thing, look there, tiny, tiny little thing. And again, super light, and I got this for 50 quid, second hand, uh, super cheap. It's okay, uh, so what I'm shooting on at the moment, so I can't show you it, is the 50 mil 1.4 and that is a beautiful lens this is not mine it's actually my dad's lens and i did break the autofocus a little tip for anyone out there make sure your lens has got manual override on the focus before you try and focus it when it's in autofocus because it does break the motors so that's unfortunate sorry dad it is still however fantastic for video especially when you're just using manual focus great uh, and that lets even more light in. I'm, at the moment, this video you're watching is shooting at 2.8 and nice blurred background hides the sort of crap that's back there quite nicely. And you can imagine if we opened up that aperture, the lens is gonna let in loads more light and the background would be even more blurry. The problem then would be that if I move at all, then I end up completely out of focus so at least at 2.8 my depth of field is deep enough that I can wobble my head a bit when I talk and you can still see me in focus so that is the 50mm 1.8 and the 50mm 1.4 lovely great however the problem with that is because that's a prime lens you're at 50mm and sometimes your room just isn't big enough to shoot at 50mm right now we're shooting this the camera is about three and a half foot away from me to get this shot so you can imagine if you wanted to see any more of me up or down then yeah we'd have to be going back and back and back and the camera right now is right up against the wall so no good on the other end of the spectrum then the next lens that i've been using and really enjoying is the canon 10 to 22 millimeter uh, this again on loan from my very generous father ooh, ooh, ooh. this is 
super wide angle and again not a fixed aperture this is 3.5 to 4.5 and this is amazing for landscapes and time lapse so some of the time lapses that you saw in the last video this lens is amazing it's so so wide that I can shoot really high definition shots and then in post-production I can kind of pan in and pan around and still end up with like a 1080p video I'm essentially shooting in raw and then downscaling to create a pan. So this just gives you such a wide shot that if I put this on now, in fact, let's do that. Okay, so see the difference that's made. The camera is in exactly the same place, but I am now tiny in the middle of my shot and you can see everything in the office and loads of mess and yeah it's terrible so this is super wide really great for landscape shots really good for anything where you haven't got a lot of room to shoot and you need to show a certain amount of detail but yeah not for everything but a really great lens and I've been really enjoying using it anyway this is really weird and really wide so I'm going to flick back to a more normal lens and we're back. So this again is the 50mm 1.4. What's the point of me telling you about all of these lenses? Really exciting because just recently, after trying all of these lenses, borrowing lenses off my dad, kind of started to settle on the lens that I think will be my sort of go-to general purpose lens. And I've just got it. This is what I went for. This is the 24 to 70 millimeter Canon F 2.8 L series lens. And let me tell you, this thing is huge. I mean, look at it. It's like, it's like as big as my head and whoop, massive. And this thing, right, this weighs 900 grams. That's, that's two pounds for anyone that likes Imperial. That's two pounds, that's two bags of sugar. It's weighty, and I can tell you, my camera, the 700D, is quite light, so when this is on it, whoop, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot to contend with. However, I'm really pleased with this lens so far. I've not had a chance to really play with it loads, but let me tell you why I chose to go for it. The lens that I'm on right now, the one that you're watching through, is lovely for portraits, but super zoomed in, and not very wide at all. The 10-22 is really nice for super wide but actually I didn't want to be changing lenses all the time so this as a general purpose lens it gives me a 24 millimeter which is sort of wide sort of like the human eye I think they say it's about what the human eye sees and it goes all the way up to 70 millimeter which is even more zoomed in than this one and the great thing about this lens is that it does it all at a fixed aperture of 2.8. Whichever end of the focal length I'm at, I get that fixed aperture, which means if I'm doing video, I can zoom in and not have to worry about my shot getting darker as it zooms. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this. It is not a cheap lens, and there's a new version of this lens now, which is the Mark II, and that is meant to be even better, and it's not as heavy as this. So this, this is old, this is old now. This came out in 2002, this lens first came out, uh, and they reissued it in 2012, and that is like, I don't know, it's about two grand, 1800 quid for the, the new one. So I got this second hand, it was sort of, really pushing my budget as it was anyway but i feel like this is a quite an investment to use anyway this seems like a great excuse to go out and do a little bit of b-roll to do some close-ups on the lens and show you what it's like roll vt
yeah, that was fun. Bit of time in the park. What have I learned since getting the lens? One quite big thing, actually. Remember that the millimetres that it gives you in a focal length on any of these lenses is only applicable on a full frame sensor. So my particular camera, the 700D, has got a crop factor on the sensor of 1.6, which means you take the millimeters of the focal length on the lens, 24, and you times it by 1.6, and that's actually what you're getting, which means this is like 38 millimeters math at its widest point and 70 mil by 1.6 is like 105 millimeters, 115 millimeters. I don't know, maths. But anyway, what this means is I'm not, I haven't got a 24 to 70. What I've got is like a 38 to 105 or 115. Oh God, maths. This has meant that actually this is not a wide lens at all. So I'm, um, you know, it's, it's great that I've got access to this 1022. So when I need a wide angle, I can use it. Uh, what else about this lens? The focus, the focus on this lens is so quick. Like beep, 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 beep. Takes no time for, for photography. Uh, it's like super, super quick and that's been an absolute joy. And yeah, it's just really smooth. I mean, to think this is old, I've just been really impressed by it, so really nice. And yeah, the extra light that this allows compared to the kit lens or even the wide angle, the extra light it allows in is really helpful, particularly in sort of low light situations. So yeah, I think that's everything today. You know what lenses I've got now and you know how excited I am about this lens. So that's about it. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.